Hi guys, it's Shelly here from Photo Tripping America and the Solo Traveler community. Today we're going to talk about a rather pressing question. How to feel safe as a solo RV traveler. So stick around, won't you? Traveling as a solo RVer sometimes has some of its own challenges. And one of the first questions I always get asked, no matter where I stop, is if I feel safe as a solo RVer. I can honestly say that over the last three years, I have never had an incidence where I felt unsafe. But I attribute a lot of that to the fact that I was prepared before I ever even hit the road. What I'd like to do today is help prepare you if you're holding off hitting the road because of some fears about solo travel. We'll give you some ideas that you might be able to institute on your own campsite and in your own behaviors that will help you feel safer and more secure. I've borrowed some of these from other RVers that I talked with before I hit the road. And then over the last three years, I've come up with some ideas of my own that seem to have worked pretty well as well. The first and last rule of thumb for solo traveling is to always trust your gut. I think most of us are pretty perceptive about knowing what feels okay and what doesn't. And so I've always decided if I pull into an area, a boondock for instance, and something just doesn't feel quite right, I just turn around and head on down the road to look for a different campsite. I know that I'm not going to get a good night's rest there anyway. Um, but if you learn to trust your gut and listen to that little voice, it can uh, keep you safe from several situations. Rule number two would be to always know and be aware of your surroundings. Know what's going on around you no matter where you are. If you're at your campsite, if you're hiking, if you're looking for a campsite, um, it's always a great rule to follow. Rule number three, camp where others are nearby. Now that doesn't mean pull in right next to them in a boondocking situation. If there's space to spread out, definitely do so and give each of you privacy. But camp within yelling distance in case you need some help. Rule number four, set up your camp before dark. That is a good rule of thumb for anybody to follow. It's difficult to back into a site after dark um, to do your hookups or level your RV or anything in a campground. And if you're boondocking, it's even difficult to find a site after dark. So uh, if you can get there before the sun falls, that's always a great idea. If you are um, street camping or stealth camping, in a vehicle that might not be quite as recognizable as an RV. Um, check out the place you want to park before the sun falls and then you can always come back after dark, but at least you've kind of checked out the area and know where you're going before the sun goes down. Rule number five, camp where you have cell service. Now this can kind of be difficult if you're boondocking, but if you can possibly find a spot that has some cell service, that gives you some uh, comfort in knowing if you need to dial 911 or you need to make some type of an emergency phone call, you can. Rule number six, let your camp hosts in an organized campground setting, let them know that you are a solo traveler. They might be able to keep an eye out for you. Rule number seven, Pull into the site of your choice with the intention of being able to get out quickly. By this I mean, let's say that, uh, like me, I'm a Class A pulling a, a car and I detach my car, pull my, um, back my RV into a campsite, and then I have to park my car in front of it. If there were any kind of a problem and I needed to get out quickly, I'd have to get out of my Class A, go to my car, move it out of the way, and then get back into the RV to drive it down the road. So if you're boondocking, for instance, if you can set up to where your RV is pulled into a situation where you can pull out quickly, that's always a great idea. Sometimes it's not doable in organized campgrounds, but do the best with what you can. Um, those were all the first seven rules that I use when I'm looking for a campsite. Now, um, after I'm at a campsite, I have some rules that I follow some of them I follow, some of them are suggestions I've never had to use, that um, setting up my campsite to look like there's more than one person living here. And that can be useful. You never have to say anything, but people just make assumptions. So um, first thing you might want to do is, if you're a female solo traveler, go to the local Goodwill store and find a big scuffed up, the 
biggest pair of work boots that you can find and set them outside your door along with a pair of your shoes and and make them obviously feminine shoes so that people think that there's at least two people in your RV that gives them the assumption that uh, there's more than one person that they would have to deal with uh, you can also set up an extra large uh, dog bowl a water bowl or something outside of your door and along with that then you might put a sticker on uh, the window of your RV that says beware of dog now I don't my dog's a golden retriever so nobody has to be aware of him he'll lick them to death but um, it might give someone pause if they were thinking of uh, maybe robbing you or worse so uh, give them every reason to leave you alone as possible some of the other things that I um, have done before would be um, I've put a motion uh, activated light outside my door and so anytime something moves right outside the door the light goes on and it stays on for I think it's 10 minutes and I think I got a pack of two of them for maybe $12. I've had this one installed for, well I've been using it for well over four years and never had any problems with it. Um, but uh, you can turn it off when you want to if you don't want any kind of a subtle light going on out there when it's not activated. There is just a bit of a doorstep light that stays on. But if you don't even want to use that during certain times, then you can turn it off. But you have the option of turning it back on and having a bright light turn on anytime someone comes to the door. One thing that I've also gotten in the habit of doing is taking my key fob from my car with me back to the bedroom at night. I have a tow vehicle that has a key fob that has an alarm on it and um, I keep it with me at the bedroom and if I hear noises around the campsite at night then I can hit that alarm if need be and it will either hopefully detour anyone or anything that's um, around the campsite and it also might get me some help from people who can hear it as well. So that's a great habit to get into. Um, another thing you can do is close your curtains when you are away from the campsite. I do not have the regular blinds or shades that most RVs come with. I sewed curtains in my RV and of course I love the sunlight so they're open as often as possible. But when we leave the campsite for the day, I normally close the curtains. It just cuts down on people wondering what's inside. Um, another thing is if you leave the campsite, you might want to turn on a TV or a radio, some type of a noise for people to think that maybe one person is still in the camper. So that will give them the illusion that someone is still there even if you're gone for the day. Um, another thing you can do is to get a dash cam and use it to record your surroundings uh, especially at night or when you're gone from your camper or RV. Uh, that is a great idea for not only safety but if something happens and you're traveling and you have your dash cam on it can record things like an accident, it can be proof of who is at fault, um, it can record people or animals that might be around your RV when you're away from it as well. Uh, another thing you might be able to do is um, carry a flashlight that has a taser involved with it. It still looks like a flashlight, but you have the capability of uh, keeping wild animals or people away when necessary. I got one of those and the only reason I got it, and I still haven't used it, I've carried it, but I've never had to use the taser, was uh, Sully got attacked once by a dog. <clears throat> and scared me so bad and I felt horrible because there was nothing I could do. It happened so quickly. And so I later talked with a friend who was also a solo traveler and she told me about this flashlight taser. So I'll find that and put a link in that uh, below this video if you're interested in looking at non-lethal ways to make sure that you're safe. Uh, that brings up another question. Some people ask if I carry a gun. And I have no problem with other people who are trained carrying their own guns, but I'm just not comfortable with that. So you'll come across situations where some people do have firearms and others are totally against it. Um, I just worry about the consequences of my own actions where I to need to use that firearm. So I'm not comf comfortable myself, but uh, certainly others are. So that might be an option for you, I don't know. And one other thing that I do use instead of a gun is I carry bear spray. 
And I've also been told that wasp spray is excellent for deterring animals as well as violent human beings. So those are two great options for you that are non-lethal. And uh, last but not least, make sure that if you're using social media, that you don't... Sally. One other thing I want to caution you about is social media. Um, all of us like to post images of beautiful campsites that we're currently at on Instagram or talk about what we're doing and what, where we're visiting and places we're seeing on Facebook. Um, I would caution you in doing that while you're still at those locations. If you could um, time your posts with specific locations after you've left them, that ensures a little more um, safety for you in people who don't need to know where you are finding out about it. That brings up one last thing. Um, you should really, before you even hit the road, set up with a friend or a family member a um, locate me system, I guess would be the best way to, to word that. Um, letting them know that you're okay, that you're safe. I had family members and friends that wanted to know how they could not only stay in touch with me, but how they could know that I was okay even when I wasn't calling them or emailing them and we decided to do something along the lines of a daily post on Instagram. If they saw a daily post then they knew that I was okay. If they didn't then they um, started contacting me and that was never necessary but it is a way for them to generally get an idea that you're okay. You might want to come up with a more specific system but do set something up so someone outside of yourself knows where you are and how you're doing. Now if you're interested in finding out more about solo travel, I've created an entire community called the Solo Traveler Community. And in there you will find courses, uh, trainings, videos, cheat sheets, and even a large forum where you can discuss with other solo travelers the ins and outs of the lifestyle. Solving problems together, um, maybe sharing favorite campsites, just about anything and you'll probably create some new friendships in there as well but our trainings cover everything from how to downsize your life if you need to sell your house or get rid of um, some items so that you can fit into an RV full-time um, to how to find the perfect RV for you and purchase it we even have courses on how to learn the different systems in the RV and how to maintain them how to tow an RV or how to tow a car behind an RV um, there are courses on how to make a living while you're on the road full-time. In fact, there are 19 different job types in there, and we've got the trainings for each of those 19 job types. Um, you will even find different ways to create community along the road so that you don't get lonely as a solo traveler. There are probably over a hundred different courses within the community as well as a forum and uh, different things to learn from and different ways that you can also share as you get on the road. But if you're interested, I will put a link in the notes below this video for the Solo Traveler community as well as a link to our website, Photo Tripping America. And in there you will find different writings and stories about our travels along the road that might inspire you to add them to your must-see list. So we'll let you go for today, but we hope you'll join us again next week at Phototripping America. Music